The owner of this guitar tells me it's going to be the ugliest guitar that has ever been on my bench. Now I have not opened it. I have not asked him for the name of the guitar or anything. So I'm going to do this with you just so that you can you can see it at the same time as I. He did say that his father likes the guitar, but he thinks it's probably one of the most ugly he's ever seen. I'm just checking to see if he's put no, nothing in it. So let's have a look at this. And let's see what it is. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's see what we think of this. Hmm. Hmm. It's, it's a bit unusual. Ah. Yes. I can see what he means. If you were looking at the body alone, it looks acceptable. But when you see it's got a fender neck on it, it makes you think again. You're used to a certain shape. Now this is called an R, I can't make it, R-H-G. Is it an R-H-G? That, that's in focus, isn't it? Yeah. It's not impressive that that logo is not impressive. It's it looks new. It's it's got uh, Warman pickups. I'm sure it's Chinese copy, but Warman pickups. That looks great. The neck is solid under the guitar. Sadly, if it was removable, that might make it a better proposition plates missing but let's see what's in the bag because something is in the bag that I've missed oh here we go here we go right okay strings and tuners yep okay strings and tuners I must admit the more I look at it the more I don't think I would want it I must admit I don't think I would want that it just is misshapen to me it's got the Gibson body, but not even a good fender make. Although it's got some nice quality of, very thick, very, very uh, broad. But it's got some nice wood and black around the edges. Still, it's not pretty to me. Right, okay. So there's that. There's, there's the strings. Also, there's other bits and pieces missing with this. So. There's the cover for up there is missing, and the back plate. But yes, there we go. It's. Uh, I'll do the. Oh, that's not good. That's spongy like anything. Oh, that's not good either. Oh, let me just see. Are they loose? Yes, they're loose. Maybe that's all's wrong with it. But that one feels. We'll see. We'll take it apart and get it all looked at. Have a quick look at the neck now, just while the camera's running. Let's see what this, the neck straightness is like. It's got an underbow that I don't like. It's a little bit more than I like. Uh, right, we'll go through this in more detail. Have a little bit of a look at this now. Pickups have been replaced, two warmants. Bridge everything, neck. Oh. There's a rattle in the neck. Let's hope the truss rod is just so loose that that's what's causing the rattle. Actually, you could feel the truss rod rattling about in there because everything else is tight. 
so it has to be the truss rod which is understandable because if you've got an underbow this needs to be tightened but let's just uh, let's just do that let's hope there's a truss rod in there <laughs> it's so far in there that I can't see it it's it's actually the head of the truss rod is that far into the neck so let me get my torch and see if I can see it but that's close to it but no uh, no banana let me just try this one to see if that's better so this is a long it's just a straightforward allen key Aha, uh -huh, right, okay, we found the right size. I think I said to you before that it's very important to use the right Allen key. So I want to tighten it, don't I? So it feels very loose. tightened it a bit but nothing's happened maybe that's because it's just so loose now it's starting to get stiff it is it is okay that's made the neck perfectly straight which I'm going to accept for now because when I'm setting it up that's what I want perfectly straight and then I might give it a slight underbow later on so let's just see yeah, it was the truss rod. There's no rattling now. You can breathe easy. If the owner's watching this later, he will be watching it. But uh, yeah, okay. So we'll check the frets. It's nicely done down the side. Nothing terribly, nothing there that's awful. Let's check leveling. Maybe a very slight on the third fret, very slight. Just check the third one again. No, no, must have been me. Yeah, just always down there. I did thought I thought I saw a little bit of a ski slope there, but it always down there you get it. So very little though. Very little. Right. Okay. Not bad, not bad at all. So what I'll do is I'll just give it a little bit of a polish. A little bit of a polish and clean and just run the fret lever over it a little bit. There's a little bit of glue there. Test the pickups. Why are those so stiff? It's always concerns me when they're that stiff because let me just get the right screwdriver. And there's no Allen keys holding it on, so Georgia girl, you can, you can, you know, okay, so it was just, they were just turning down a bit too much. Georgia girl's wandering around. I mean, is this the right size screwdriver? Yes, it is, yeah. All right, so it had been tightened right down. That's okay, that's acceptable. So, first thing I'm going to do after I've done the truss rod is tighten up these uh, things to make sure that's all's wrong with them so I'll just do that now why wait for spring actually none of you'll know what I'm saying when I when I say that because when I lived in Canada there was a commercial and this is in the 60s the late 60s and it was uh, for DIY do I DIY do a D, do I DIY a DIY shop and said, why wait for spring? Do it now, because everybody then just shot with their houses up. And see, that's already padded. Everybody takes the time in spring to start doing their houses up. So the DIY shop, to drum up business, says, why wait for spring? Do it now. I presume 
these are loose because the person who replaced the pickups decided to loosen these to get them to get the wiring done but I don't know I don't know why you would want to do that I don't know why you need to do that I'm not not very fond of the shape of the guitar but would I call it the ugliest guitar I think I'll give myself some time on it to think about it because let me just put my hand back there because it doesn't look nice with that head it really doesn't you know That feels a bit better. Let's just feel it. The starburst, the the sunburst aspect is a bit strange too, because you see that goes down to there and it's got a line across, and it's the same on the other side. It goes to there and then you can see lines across. I'm not looking for pickiness on it. It's it's a nice guitar. It just is ruined by that big massive head. That is really well out of proportion to the rest of it. They probably made it big to get that little bit of wood around the edges. But again, fender head on a Gibson body. It's a bit like uh, Alien. So let's have a look at the screws on the inside. It looks okay. Let's just see. Let just put my hand in there tighten it and I'm going to use my new pliers. I want to make sure I don't scratch the bolt. Test it now for electrics and see what we got in the way of electrics. Oh, I haven't checked the jack plug yet. Okay. Yeah, that all sounds great. And there's not any fuzzing or buzzing or anything like that there, so I don't have anything to do with electrics. And there's no fuzzing on the... Oh, that's loose. Everything's loose, baby. Everything's loose. That's loose. So, look, can I reach in there? Yes, I can. And it's turning around. You turn me right round, baby, right round. That's it. That needs to be good and tight. Good and tight. Okay. That's my... Off you go. So where do you put the knobs? Where do you put the knobs? Where do you put the number 10? Somebody asked me that. Well, the guitar's for you to play, so you should be able to see where the maximum volume or the on-off is when you look at it from down there. So that's 10 at the moment. So I always put the the 10 right to the top so that the player can look down and see what the volume is set for or the tone control although I wonder if anybody ever does look down I think they just I need more thing I need less thing Georgie girl you're very quiet you worried me that's better that's better that's better I'll put on the, the nuts, the tuning heads, the peg heads, the tuning heads, the peg heads, whatever the hell you call them. What did I, what did I do with them? There they are. There they are. There. What are you doing? Right, okay. Oh, there's the... Uh, the my head my head on the screws attached as well that's the truss road cover Ex excellent so that saves a little bit of hassle and these are hmm can't see the make of them what make is that eh? 
What make is that? Okay. Let me just see another one. It looks like Z or J E T maybe Jet. 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 Can't say I've heard of them. Okay. And they've no knob. Some of them have a little knob that when you press it down holds it. But not this time. Sorry, my mistake, my mistake. Make sure they fit perfectly. Just a little bit, if you look there. Let me just turn it around for you. Because of that wide lip between there and there, you have very little room to turn. See, the distance from there to there is wide, so just hitting it no more. No, it's not hitting it, it's just missing it no more. Bloody hell. Right, let's just set them in place. You can always get it wrong, so what I'm going to do next is get a cup of coffee and then mark those and position them and then tighten them down and then put the truss cover on, put the strings on, test it. All right. Now, I'm sort of, I've uh, set them up. I've used my punch to get them in the, the screws in the right place and nothing sort of exciting happened during that. Uh, the problem I did find is that I use a punch and the punch punched the wood so easily that it felt like it was going to go right through it. So when you know you, you use your little punch tool, you know, to try to stab it, you expect some resistance on the head. I didn't get an awful lot of resistance, so it made me worry about the type of wood. But it also made me happy in a way because... It, I've had so many occasions where these little screws snap off when you slightly tighten them and I suspect with the wood on this that it's not going to do that. So uh, that's one bonus. The other thing I did notice whenever I was doing my measuring up and punching is that there's a gap there. The, each one of these is equidistant, those two three and those two three. but maybe for purposes of design they put an extra gap between the third and let me just get this in that's it they put an, ex an extra gap between the two in the middle okay well that's maybe that's their forte and let's just put these screws in I'm just going to tighten them down a little bit, feel how they go. I'm not quite convinced this is the exact screwdriver that I need to use for it. But... Okay. R. H. G. I just sneezed, Georgie girl, sorry. R H G. This, little, this is not. None of, they're not completely tightened yet. I want to put everything together before I tighten the screws. I want to see it's all working. Uh, don't think the washers are making this very pretty, but don't think there is much you can make to do to make this very pretty. It's okay, it's okay, it's not awful, it's just not great, you know. Now can you see the the way the middle one has got a bigger gap? Let's hope it's a design thing. Okay. And they haven't punched any holes for the truss road cover, so we're going to have to do that as well. All right, I'll do that later. I'm going to get that coffee that I promised myself. All right. Oh, you didn't see that. Let me just take that back. 
The truss rod cover is not pre-punched so if I put the truss rod there the problem is that it's inside that hole. If I put the truss rod cover over the hole it just fits it but it's not much room there. Oh, that truss Hmm. To get enough bite for that screw, it's hitting the edge there. I think I don't want to put it on a crooked. I think I'd have to do something like that. I'll try that on later on. Right, I've decided what I'm going to do is I'm not going to use the screws on this. I have some extra strong double-sided sticky tape and I'm going to put it right up tight to the nut where it'll look good. And then I have some black screws, brand new ones that I bought, and I'll chop the heads off and I'll just drop the heads in there to make it look like it's screwed. But if anybody wants to adjust the fret rod, they just peel off the double-sided sticky tape, which is very strong, but it'll make that look better because the screw holes are too wide, too close to the edges there of that for me to bring it up. I have to bring it up too far and it's still not far enough to catch that screw. So I'm going to do a bit of a Heath Robinson which will look good in the long run. Let me just and uh, and I just chop the heads off and then put a touch of glue on it. Maybe even before I stick it down. I'll have to take off the sticker because the plastic's still on top of that. But that's what I think is the best solution for this. Hello, and now Georgie girl wants some cuddles, and it means it's time to stop. I still haven't got that coffee yet. Right, come on, Georgie girl. You just love to take over, don't you? Right. She does, doesn't she? She just loves to take over. Okay. It took three goes. Three goes of sellotape to get that in the right place. You only get one chance with this double-sided sellotape. And this is so close to the actual hole size that I got it too high at the beginning, then too far down at the second time. So the third time I have it just right. And when I put the strings on and got the leveling right and everything, I'm going to put the little black screw heads in there uh, and finish it off. Right, stringing time, stringing along, and I'm I'm looking at this beautiful body and this ugly face. And if Google, YouTube have heard those words, I'll get demonetized if I was monetized. Well, not. Beautiful body, ugly face. Hmm. I think I might get charged with sexism, sexism there. Right, this is on backwards, this is not on the right way around, so I'll put it on the right way around and get the first string in. And from now on you're not going to see anything in, oh, oh, right, just enough string and no more. Right, okay, right, and that's uh, not a cheap set of strings, that's a Tico. So they don't give you much string, it must be an extra long neck. Let me just check that this is not left handed. It's not. Okay, from now on it's going to go zip 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 zip. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, Georgia girl wants me to stop. Well, I'm Georgia girl, I'm sorry, but I have to just keep going. You want cuddles at the most awkward times, don't you? Okay, I'll give you cuddles because they won't notice. They won't notice that I'm going to take a break and give you cuddles. So come give me cuddles. You're right. Okay. She wants cuddles. Right. Cuddles stop play again. Okay. Five minutes worth of kisses and hugs and purring. Is it worth it? You got to be able to take the. You got, so we're back to stringing the game, but you got to be able to take a little bit of time off just to give your loved ones a little bit of cuddles. And she is the loveliest, cuddliest child in the world. Oh, 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 I think I spoke too soon. She's back again. But I, I'm no, I really must carry on now. But she wants to play with the string. No claws, no claws. No, 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 no. My, I get end up getting, getting scratched to death. 
a few claws. Right, okay, that's the E string was just enough. No. Georgie girl, beep beep. Oh, I can't give you more cuddles. I want to just get something done tonight. Can you just let me have a few minutes before you need more cuddles? Eh? Yes, I know. It's not really cuddles you want. It's control. No, no, don't touch the new strings. And some people say she's got her claws on this guitar. Well, as I've said to people before, Georgie Girl is unique. Not that she can't scratch you, but she is a sphinx cat, a hairless cat that came out of her mommy and I'm repeating myself, but she came out of her mommy with hair. And it's not just any old hair she has, it's like pure silk. It's the smoothest. She doesn't shed. Well, she does shed slightly, but not very much. And she is probably what you, I would call the perfect cat because her claws are very fine and they're not like a standard cat's claws. So they don't do an awful lot of damage, even if the shear is using the scratching post, which I do provide for her. And no, Georgia girl, I have to just keep on. I'll give you cuddles later on. So she's a unique cat that she doesn't have all the black, those hairs every time you move. And she's unique that her claws do not cause any damage to the settees or anything like that there. And she's unique that she loves attention, just loves attention. And nobody, I'm talking while I'm stringing, I shouldn't be doing it. When I do the tuning, I'll stop talking. But you see at night time when she climbs, and climbs into bed beside me, head on my pillow, arm on my neck, and sleeps with her face right up against mine. And it's the loveliest thing ever. And on top of that, I had a cat before that, used to sleep in bed with me, whose breath would have melted your with the melted uh, the hairs on your face like love because it was so rank but I'm in love with this little Georgie girl she's just so lovely as a person personality as well and she controls my life and she controls where I live and she is a doll not that she can't be but not that she can't be naughty she can be naughty because she got into a bad mood yesterday. I think she's in a bad mood because I decided to sit down and watch a movie. And I'm very cautious with spending money on heating because I don't have a pile of money. And she decided she wanted to lie down beside me when I'm watching the set tea or when I'm watching a TV on the set tea. And so every time I moved, she was cross because she was warm and comfortable. And she has this expression on her face that lets you know she's cross. She scowls at you. And if you don't behave yourself, she'll put her, her, claw, her teeth out and go like that there and touch you. And yesterday she was threatening me all the time. Stop moving. Stop moving. I'm comfortable and I'm warm. You know, so she... I let her get away with it. I shouldn't have let her get away with it. But she didn't scratch, she didn't bite, but she kept on looking at me with a scowling look. And every now and then she go with her teeth. Eh, 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 stop moving. But she controls me. She's like a woman. Right, this is supposed to be fast and silent, and I'm telling you stories about Georgia girl, but I can't help it. She's gorgeous. Best thing I ever did was get a little cat like her. Mind you, I've had many cats over the years, and they've all been great. But I think no harm to them, as they say in Northern Ireland. But she's, this little girl is delightful. She's a rarity. She never goes out the door. She's not allowed out the door. I have a special catio built onto the window where she can do her... Uh, let me just check that I'm... Yeah, I've got enough cable. Where she can go outside, but... Indoor cats live a lot longer and are a lot healthier. And if you love your cat the way I love my cat, 
you want them to live as long as possible. She doesn't have fleas, she doesn't have any of those disease because she's not outside suffering with all the other cats, unfortunately. Now, you know I do all these guitars for animals, so it's not just that I would spoil Georgie Girl, but I would spoil all animals that way. And uh, you, you, the merit of a country is judged by the way they treat their animals. And the same applies to a human being. The merit of a human being is by the, by, by the way he treats his, his pets, his animals, and the, those around him. Now, that doesn't mean to say I'm a vegetarian. I'm not. But at the same time, you can be as... Look at this, just climbing up on me. You can be as humane as possible and still maintain the, the diet that you must have. Right, so that's the strings on, and Georgia Girl's in my arms again. Now, the strings are actually touching the body the whole way down, so that's going to have to be raised up a bit. Uh, and I'm going to need both hands to do that. So I'm going to plug her in and adjust that while she's plugged in. But in the meantime, Georgia Girl's insisting on me taking another little break. Right, back again. Now I'm going to put the guitar amplifier on, and let's have a listen while I set this up. Georgie girl decided to go out into her catio. She must have heard me saying. Lovely, isn't it? Beautiful. None of those are tightened, by the way. They're all just very loose. Right, so proper size screwdriver for there. Not a screwdriver that doesn't fit, but a proper size one. It's one of the pet hates I have is looking at these things and finding that they've been using the wrong screwdriver and they're all screwed up. And they're all damaged for no reason. Then again, you get a guitarist who's playing on stage. He doesn't want to rush around trying to find the right screwdriver. Right. Do it by sight first. That's far too low. The action on this is going to be superb because the neck is as straight as a die. Action's about the width of the pick down there. My guitar, my amplifier buzzes, but let's. Let's leave the pickups until the last and get this in tune and check the neck height and get it all working. So where's my tuner? Here it is here. And I'm not going to talk through this because there's nothing more boring than listening to tuning. So I'm going to speed it up from nah. Right, now that head is awkward because that head to me is designed for a left-handed person although the nuts are on for a right-handed person and the whole guitar parts are designed for a right-handed person but for tuning purposes you have to reach around the guitar to get to the other side or underneath it to tune it. Other guitars with fender shape have that where you can reach down and tighten it up there. This one you have to reach underneath. So that's another mark against it. But let's get it, let's get it, it's tuned, it's in tune now. Sounds in tune, does it? The action on that is excellent, really, really excellent. Uh, can you see that? 
I'm very impressed with that action. I actually probably could bring it down another little bit of knot, get this in tune. Uh, right, okay. We'll get the intonation done now. Interesting, eh? That looks interesting. Yeah, the screws are at an angle, which is nice. Which means you, instead of having to force it onto the wires, you can get to the screws. Hmm, I like that. So it's too sharp, so it needs to come back a bit. You notice that this, this screwdriver is an uh, electrical screwdriver and it's got plastic covering. You can get in there without having to worry about scratching. So you can turn it away and it's not going to scratch it, there's no metal touching it. It's acceptable but I don't like it that I have to go full forward on it. Slightly flat, but very close, but I can't go any further up. Just, let's just set the pickups now and I'll have to take these off because I need to set the pickups. Setting the pickups is a thankful, thankless task because any good guitar player will set the pickups to the height he wants. Let me just look at the E string here. Yeah. Those heights are all great. thing I do see is that the post the post is not pressed right into the body but I'm not going to hammer that in too risky okay I think I'm going to let it go home with that I'm just going to stick the little screws to the top cut the screws and just stick them in with a little drop of uh, PVA and send this baby home. See a little bit of a scratch there. Nothing I can do about that, unfortunately. All right, say goodbye to it. I couldn't find anything about it on the neck. It's a something, something, something. So you let me know if you could find anything about it on the net. But I suspect it's a cheap old Chinese copy of something. But to fix this, the easiest thing Actually, no, 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 don't say that. To fix the appearance of this, the, the, the thing you could do is chop the neck off because the, 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 the truss rod starts about there and you could easily just trim that off and put a headless guitar on it and get rid of that well done but ugly head. Goodbye, guitar. What a lovely body. Mmm. Long, slim neck, but what an ugly face. There's a moral in that story for us all, isn't there? This, I took it back out of its case again because it's ready to go home because it was annoying me. I was lying in bed last night thinking about it and I'm looking at the intonators and you see how far up they are there. I think that he can probably go further up to get a little bit better. 
they shouldn't be right up there. So I did a little bit of a test this morning and I found out that the distance from there to there and the distance from there to there, that's too far back. It should have been put further forward to give us more room to play. But on top of that, this back piece, it's not square. It should be square to the neck. And this should be slightly at an angle, but not as far back as that. It makes that look like it's not as badly out of whack, but it's too far out of whack. And to bring that up a bit, I actually think that the whole thing's actually misplaced. It should be about there. The 12th fret measurement is about there and the same equidistance from the 12th fret to the head of the nut. So the 12th fret measurement should be about there to allow some adjustments, but there's not much you can do about it. So as I say, nice body, nice neck, shame about the boat race.